Well, good morning and welcome to my brand new show on GB News. It's been a long time coming. I have to admit to a bit of nerves. However, I have been distracted all week, as you can imagine. I'm sure you know I also cover the royals as well as politics. One minute I was writing about Rishi Sunak's five-point plan. The next I was making an analysis of Prince Harry's genitals and whether they had been frostbitten. That's the nature of the news, I'm afraid. That's what it's like from week to week. And of course, the Harry and Meghan story dominates the papers. We're going to be getting onto that a little later in the show. We're also going to be talking about the NHS because, of course, it's in crisis. You know this. We know this. We're going to be speaking to Maria Caulfield, who's the health minister, about what the Tories plan to do about it. We're also going to be speaking to Wes Streeting. He's the Shadow Health Secretary to ask Labour what their plan is. And let's also discuss migration. Again, a key topic. We're going to be speaking to former Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott. Let me run you through the front pages first of all. I'm going to bring in my guest in just a moment, Martin Townsend, former editor of the Sunday Express. But before we hear from him what his favourite stories are, let me just run you through some of the headlines. Sunday Times, NHS to buy up care beds to clear wards. Sunday Telegraph, Harry's guilt. I couldn't cry in public when my mother died. The Observer also goes with a story about the NHS. NHS hospitals push private route to quick and easy care. Sunday Express, my former stable. Harry puts children in danger. That's in reference to his brag that he killed 25 Taliban fighters. Sunday Mirror, Harry has made Invictus Games a target. Mel on Sunday, again, another royal story involving Harry. You've been brainwashed by therapy, William told Prince Harry. And finally, the son on Sunday. Will lunge at me after Philip's funeral. This is a different argument to the dog bowl one. This involved a row that the brothers had after Prince Philip was buried. Would you believe? Now, Martin... <laughs> Lovely to see you. <laughs> Lovely to see you too. Do you like this idea that I've invited in a former boss yes, for my first yeah. show so you can put me through my paces as <laughs> you ever did when I worked for you? <laughs> you were totally Sunday Express it. editor for, what, 17 years, wasn't it? 17 years, And yeah. then OK Magazine before then. Yes, indeed, during the Beckham, the golden years of the Beckhams. The golden balls. As indeed, like to call indeed. Um, now, I know that you know your onions on this, so let's go through the papers and the stories that you chose particularly. OK. There is so much coverage of Harry, it's hard to pick and choose, isn't it? Yeah. But Harry you... who, would that be? What? Harry who? Yes, exactly. <laughs> that shy and retiring royal indeed, that went yes. off to Montecito to live a private life. Um, but you've chosen for quote of the day, Lord West of Spithead, former head of the Navy. Now, this is quite astonishing. He's called Harry very stupid for giving details of his Taliban kills. We can see it here in this spread in the mirror. Why did this particularly appeal? Because it's a difficult day to get an exclusive, isn't it? Yeah, well, I, I mean, the interesting thing about the, the whole Harry week, which we've had this week, um, is that there's been sort of claim after claim after claim and all these stories coming out. You know, we know about him talking to pedal bins. We know about him, you know, sort of cavorting with women behind pubs. Yeah. You know, we know about him falling into a dog bowl and breaking his ne necklace. I mean, it's just been mad. It seems to me that most of the, the kind of punches aimed at the royal family haven't really landed. I mean, that's my, my impression. Yeah. The one line, I think, which sticks, stands out, where you would have thought someone would have said, Harry, no, don't go there, is when he said that he'd killed this number of Taliban fighters and that he'd knocked them over as if they were on a chessboard, which yeah. to me is just the most appalling that thing to say. His supporters, <clears throat> and obviously he's still got his cheerleaders, have sort of said this is to be taken out of context and he... He said he didn't feel any emotion either way mm. about it, and that was his yes. job. So regardless of perhaps the nature of was he bragging or was he just telling it like it is, there's key concerns among the military and indeed royal security experts that it's not just exposed his own family and the royals, but also the public. I mean, there's a coronation coming up. Absolutely. And the point that Lord West, former head of the Royal Navy, makes in this particular piece, and the reason why I thought it was interesting was that not only, not only will the security have to be increased at the Invictus Games, obviously, because we saw what happened with, with Salman Rushdie a few months ago yeah. on that book tour. And worth pointing out, the Invictus Games is full of ex-service personnel. Absolutely, so, yeah. You know. But also every event now that Harry attends, they're going to have to look at the security more carefully. And Harry himself has put himself in a position where he and his family are going to be looking over their shoulders, possibly for the rest of their lives. So, you know, it's crazy. It's, it's absolutely crazy. It's extraordinary. It's extraordinary. There's so much, obviously, on Harry and Meghan, but the other theme that dominates, of course, today is the NHS. Yes. Um, 
I mean, the crisis that the NHS faces at the moment, I know we keep on talking about unprecedented natures of crises in uh, 2023, but I mean, it's quite serious. And this is the um, leader that you've chosen, uh, the leader page, obviously, in every newspaper talking about what the newspaper thinks about any given crisis. This is in The Telegraph. Why did you like this? You felt this was punchy. I just thought it was timely. I mean, Rishi Sunak today has been talking about uh, well, both Rishi Sunak and Sir Keir Starmer have been talking about NHS reform today. I mean, I, I ran headlines when, when I was on the Sunday Express. We, we ran headlines every single winter talking about an NHS crisis, every single winter I, that I can remember. So, you know, for years, for decades. The thing I, know, I, I don't get at the moment is that this is specifically a Tory problem. It's not a partic- specifically a Tory problem. It's a government problem. When the NHS was set up originally by the Labour government, there was a minister who made the the remark that it would work as long as people exercised restraint. Mm. Well, clearly that has not happened. You know, I think that the the fact that lots of people use A&E instead of going to the doctors, that's not exercising restraint. And that there's a huge pressure on on A&E and all that kind of stuff. But in, 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 alongside that, we've seen that there is this reluctance to touch this, this sacred cow, yes. which is the NHS. It's like become a religion. It's become a religion. And the point that this particular leader is making is enough. Yeah. You know, successive governments have failed. We know that um, there's nowhere for elderly people to go. If they're in hospital and they're discharged, where do they go? Yeah. You know, the, the, the care homes, the kind of in-between homes that my mother went into, for instance, after leaving hospital, that's closed now. But there's, I mean, there's... I think, at least 40,000 patients waiting in hospital that can't get into care. Yes. Just to take you on to the next piece that you've chosen, this is for your best opinion, Pete. It's Dan Hodges in the Mail on Sunday, and it's about Boris's comeback. Now, would you believe in this week of weeks, there's <laughs> loads of coverage, Tim Shipman's got it in the <laughs> Sunday Times, about Boris. Briefly, Martin, just talk me through this story. Well, it's basically it's based around the fact that Boris is going to be making this appearance at the Carlton Club in London on Tuesday to unveil a portrait of himself, which is a, a normal thing that ex-prime ministers do. And off the back of that, there is a lot of excitement around his former supporters, his former his former cheerleaders about the possibility of a Boris comeback. What do you comeback. think of the possibility? Well, you know, I kind of get this headline. For Team Rishi, Boris is now a real threat. For Team Keir, he's the only threat. Yes. And I think for for the Tories, he may well be the only way that they're going to win an election. Is it the case that the the Tories have made a terrible mistake getting rid of this guy? No, I think he had to go at that point. I think he really did have to go. I think it it wasn't done lightly. And I think Partygate, he he basically boxed himself into a corner. He's the instrument of his own downfall. But... A comeback, I wouldn't write it off by no, any means. No, never write Boris off, I think, is the best conclusion. <laughs> and then finally, best exclusive. Fears that three billion million mini tanks won't ever be on track. What's this all about, Martin? Well, this is an interesting one. This is a, this is a project called Ajax, which is these mini tanks. And this originally, this project originally started back in 2017. It's taken all this time for these tanks to be, to be delivered to the MOD. They've been put into trial and 300 troops who tried them out was shaken about so oh. badly by these tanks that they've had to go in for hospital care. So, you know, it's one of those examples, one of the m- many examples I think we see over the years of, of MOD sort of projects that either never happen it, despite squandering billions of pounds or just go wrong. I remember there was a gun a few years ago yeah, that, that, never, Dems, worked that and... never worked. And it's just another one of those. And I think it's just... You know, at a time where everybody's kind of in the middle of an economic crisis. Yeah. If we've got money, can we spend it sensibly, please? Well, indeed, yeah. Martin Townsend, thank you very much for joining me on my first ever paper review. Thank you. I hope you'll come back. I will indeed. Thank you very much indeed. (laughs)